When Elon Musk purchased Twitter for $44 billion in 2022, he did so to make it better than ever, he said. As an avid user of Twitter for years prior, Musk often expressed his distaste for the moderation policies the company enforced, and upon gaining control, defended his overhaul of them as fighting for free speech in America. Free speech is something Musk has repeatedly claimed he holds dear. He's referred to himself as a free speech absolutist, and in a press release published upon completion of the deal, Musk said he was motivated to buy the platform because free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy, and Twitter is the digital town square, where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. But since he took over and rebranded the platform as X, his uneven and frenetic moderation has revealed a hypocritical understanding of the value he purportedly loves. Look at his statement again. Half of it is true. Free speech is crucial to functioning democracy. But while Twitter may have felt like the digital town square at one point, the central hub of discourse and exchange of ideas, it is also a private entity, something Musk has not forgotten, even if he doesn't like to draw attention to it. When questioned further, Musk narrows his preferred form of free speech to one which matches the law, and that his preference is to hew close to the laws of countries in which X operates. So suddenly, Musk's free speech absolutism isn't so absolute. It's conditional, based on whatever country X is operating in. But he doesn't even consistently apply that principle. Consider how he's handled the laws of two countries, India and Brazil. Just two months after he took over, X complied with orders from the administration of India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi to block a documentary that was critical of Modi's complicity in a violent anti-Muslim massacre in 2002 in the state of Gujarat, where Modi was chief minister at the time. Musk claimed to be unaware of the action in response, but then justified it, noting, The rules in India for what can appear on social media are quite strict and we can't go beyond the laws of the country. If we have a choice of either our people going to prison or we comply with the laws, we will comply with the laws," declared this brave champion of free speech. He could have invoked the Indian constitution's strong commitment to free speech to push back against the government's request, but he caved. But Musk isn't consistent in his compliance. He recently clashed with a Brazilian judge who was pressuring X to block accounts accused of spreading misinformation and anti-democratic sentiment, including claims that last year's election was rigged and calls for a violent coup. According to a Brazilian fact checker, X saw a 1200% increase in this type of content from the year prior, and an overwhelming number came from far-right accounts who supported former President Jair Bolsonaro. In response to the judge's requests, Musk refused and reiterated his position that free speech is the bedrock of democracy, adding, an unelected pseudo-judge in Brazil is destroying it for political purposes. Musk also called him an evil dictator and Brazil's Darth Vader. Musk's non-compliance led to alleged threats of arrest of X's Brazilian legal representative, Musk closing their offices in Sao Paulo, and the subsequent complete ban of the platform nationwide. A post from the X Global Government Affairs account argued, The fundamental issue at stake here is that the judge demands we break Brazil's own laws. We simply won't do that. This is actually not the case. In 2014, Brazil passed an Internet Bill of Rights that outlines both principles of protecting free speech and created a judicial notice and takedown system that holds platforms accountable for removing content after receiving court orders. The Brazilian Supreme Court has handed the judge in question expansive powers to clean up the Internet. That might be lamentable and dangerous, 
But the judge is not violating his own country's laws that Musk is claiming to be heroically upholding. In any case, Musk's claim would be more believable if he had shown the same screw you stance against Modi and walked out of India too. I am a fan of Modi, so. <laughs> this shows that Musk is very selective in the free speech fights he picks. If there's a pattern, it seems it is that when some right-wing cause or figure he likes is being silenced, he'll stick up for free speech. But otherwise, he's glad to roll over. Musk simply picks and chooses which governments he wants to oblige and which to stick his tongue out at. And Musk is not only inconsistent when it comes to government pressure or jawboning. You could just as easily point out Musk's intrinsic hypocritical moderation of what subjects can or can't be spoken of on X. Anti-Semitism? Elon says, cool. Did you use the word cisgender? Elon says, boo. Are you battling to the death with the anti-civilizational woke mind virus? You're good. Are you the New York Times? Get out of here. In response to questions of why X was seemingly throttling links to the Grey Lady, this is what Elon had to say. Any organization that refuses to buy a subscription is not going to be recommended. But then what does that say about free speech? And what does well, that say about like amplifying free speech certain, is not certain exactly voices? Free. It costs a little bit. Right, but, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, but that's an interesting... And yeah, it is interesting because it gets to the heart of the problem with Elon. It's not that Musk is limiting speech on his platform. From a free speech standpoint, he has the right to do whatever he wants. It's that he's doing so under the guise of free speech absolutism, when it distinctly is free speech squishiness.